About 1,000 new oil wells are put into operation in Rosneft annually. The equipment used in the wells is often required to work in the most extreme conditions. To reduce unplanned loss of oil and risks of early ESP failure, the company has taken control of new equipment development. We created submersible ESP MIM equipment based on innovative technologies of injective methane reshaping. This is a unique technology with nothing like it in Russia or anywhere in the world. To improve operation efficiency of low debit wells, we were the first Russian oil company to develop common technical requirements for intellectual management stations. As a result, we have intelligent equipment that automatically selects the most appropriate mode of well operation and maintains it throughout the entire operation period of wells. Starting this year, commercial replication of the equipment is recommended to other subsidiaries of our company. There are 168,000 employees, 2,000 gas stations, 414 deposits, 7 refineries, and 343 billion rubles of net profit. There are proven oil reserves for 21 years and natural gas reserves for 67 years. We are Rosneft, the largest oil company in Russia, presented in the World Energy Sector Leaders Club. In 2010, there were almost 120 million tons of crude oil in the pipeline of the company, 12 million of it from Bancor Field, achieving its planned production capacity for 2010. The company started reconstruction of its biggest and most important oil refineries, signed major deals in China, Europe, UAE, and North Africa, and still ranks first in Standard & Poor's Information Transparency Ranking. Western and Eastern Siberia, South and Central Russia, Far East and Arctic Sea shells are major resources of oil and gas not only for the company but also for all of Russia. Hundreds of geological sites in Russia and abroad are currently being explored. Rosneft now has great oil and gas potential primarily due to the autumn 2010 purchase of licensed sites in Arctic Sea shells. Sakhalin 3 and Sakhalin 5 projects are being implemented in collaboration with foreign partners on special conditions that minimize risks for the company. In 2010, Rosneft was named the richest in liquid hydrocarbons resources among the world's largest public oil companies. The history of oil output extends back for almost 5,000 years. The ancient Egyptians extracted oil from surface water and used it in construction, house lighting, as a fuel, and even added it to the mixture used for embalming. The history of Russian oil began in 1848. The world's first modern oil well was drilled on the Absheron Peninsula near Baku. At that time, the area was part of the Russian Empire. One of the most important milestones in this history is the heroic exploration of Samatlar. It made this region legendary and literally like gold. Any further global development of oil producing land didn't seem to be possible after that. But today, Rosneft can proudly say that it has created one more chapter in this story, Vancor. The oil field was discovered 23 years ago. It is located in permafrost and 150 kilometers inside the Arctic Circle. What is it like to extract oil in the tundra? Temperature extremes there are from negative 50 to plus 15 degrees Celsius. There is a lack of oxygen as Vancouver stands at an altitude of 2,000 meters above sea level. All inhabited settlements are far away from the field. To get there, you must first fly from Krasnoyarsk to Igarka and then use a helicopter to reach the very center of the permafrost. In case of non-flying weather, the only way out is a winter road, actually a path through the snow which takes about 24 hours by special purpose vehicles. But despite all the difficulties, we heavily invested in Vancouver. Already after the first year of its full operation, the field is the second largest in the company. Vancouver launched 19 so-called pads, or shrubs, with 71 boreholes. They are already used for oil production. Drilling rigs that have made 301,000 meters a year are now preparing new wells. It sometimes gets down to minus 64 degrees Celsius on the Vancouver field in winter, Despite the fact that the average temperature in this climate is almost always below zero, there is a thermal stabilizer under each of the hundreds of thousands oil containers and piles. A thermal stabilizer is just a cooler. Oil
oil from wells enters tanks at about 30 degrees Celsius. The ground under the tank can be melted because of heating, which can lead to construction damage. Therefore, there is a need to constantly cool down each structure in contact with oil, even in winter. The functioning of all drilling equipment is controlled from the Center for Geological Support of Drilling. It is located in Moscow on the Sofiskaya Bankment, opposite the Kremlin. It is the only center of its kind in Russia. The company's specialists working there get complete, real-time drilling data 24 hours a day. They can carry out analysis and, if necessary, give commands to a field to adjust drilling parameters. This process allows the organization to avoid mistakes and save the company significant time and money. Over the past three to four years, Rosneft has become a real leader in the Russian oil sector, not only in terms of oil production and refining, but also for its high standard of corporate governance and disclosure. In general, due to the change of top management, the company does not rest on its laurels. Last year, Rosneft increased its production by 6%, compared to a 2% average for Russia. It should also be mentioned that management retains complete control over expenses despite intensive growth. Technological innovations in Rosneft are handled by its Corporate Research and Design Center. All innovations are concentrated in a separate, newly formed scientific and technological development department with the Vice President of Innovative Management. The department will be able to effectively coordinate the work of almost 4,000 scientists in 10 regional research and development project institutes. Every day our scientists conduct experiments, develop new programs and technologies, test foreign innovations and adopt the most advanced ones for production. In 2010, 394 tests were carried out there and 97 technologies were introduced. They established the innovative development concept of the company. This includes more than 20 specific projects. Many of them look like futuristic science fiction today. For example, an oil platform for Arctic seashells. Such platforms already exist, but they are able to work only a couple of months a year during the period of ice melting. Rosneft plans to develop a platform that can operate all year round, also during the ice period in the Kara and Pechora seas. Rosneft has seven of its own refineries, which process almost half the oil produced. The largest of them, Novokuvishis and Tapse refineries, are under reconstruction. The Tapse refinery is fully upgraded. Actually, a new modern factory was built on its territory. Also, its geographical location is particularly profitable for the company. It is just a few meters away from the Black Sea coast. The construction of a new marine terminal intended for export of the plant's products is in progress. The over 60-year-old Novokuvishis refinery has also undergone significant reconstruction. The company has launched a new plant for oil refining able to produce Euro 4 and Euro 5 level products in the shortest time possible. An oils and additives plant built on the refinery's territory produced more than 100 items last year, equal to 580,000 tons of oils, additives and other related products, which is almost 8% more than in 2009. The company plans to further develop deep processing, producing products with higher added value. This is one of the strategic directions of Rosneft development. There's some oil in medications we have at home. Well-known aspirin and some analgesics are produced from raw materials derived from either petroleum or coal, which are very similar in their chemical composition. The number of medications containing oil is so large that a list of them would be 70% of any local pharmacy's assortment. Rosneft has quite an unusual personnel policy for Russia. The company has created a school-university factory system of education to train specialists starting from primary school. Many students of regional schools compete for the chance to study in such classes. 550 graduates from Rosneft classes enrolled in universities. 397 of them chose field-specific professions in 2010. Rosneft is now collaborating with 26 universities in Russia. The Siberian branch of the Oil and Gas Institute in Krasnoyarsk was built and equipped by the company. 
исходя из компетенции предъявляемых нефтяной компании Роснефть. Due to Rosneft requirements for our university trained professionals, they have to quickly switch from theoretical knowledge and get hands-on experience. In order to do that, we have created several training grounds. For instance, a training area for geodetic and geophysical practice with special drilling equipment and an experimental rig. There is a project to create a large training area which would represent all the existing technological units from oil production and refining enterprises so students could quickly obtain all these skills in practical field studies. Understanding its responsibility for the future of the country, Rosneft does its best to preserve the natural environment and prevent environmental disasters. For example, Vancouver Field has no buildings, roads, nor pipelines that are built without the consent of environmentalists. It came up with green technology to create roads on sand pillows. Each pad consists of multiple layers of geotextiles, the most modern material that doesn't pollute the soil. Such a complex structure is designed primarily because the fact that all materials can be removed without polluting the soil after the deposit is worked out. Pipelines at Vancor were constructed as high as possible in order to preserve the natural paths of wild animals. All the pipes in each field are regularly examined for corrosion to prevent oil leakage. It is done with a special high-tech device that moves slowly down the pipe scanning every inch of metal. On Vancor, there is a closed system for safe disposal of processed gas instead of a flare system common in Russia. There are no flares in the conventional sense and combustion takes place in a special enclosed chamber. This flare emits no smoke and it has a hood for air suction which helps cool down the chamber during gas combustion. The system removes 99.9% .9 of gaseous carcinogens. It can even be used in inhabited areas. The total investment for the implementation of environmental activities for the whole company in 2010 amounted to 13.3 billion rubles. Unlike most companies, Rosneft has its own oil export terminals in Tapse, Dekastri, Nakhodka, and Arkhangelsk. That is how the company supplies crude oil and finished commodities to Europe and China with the maximum benefit in the shortest period of time. Transportation of oil from the new marine terminal Kozmino in the Far East is carried out by 100,000 ton tankers. This takes two to three days, which is three times faster than the time intensive shipping from the Middle East. In fact, China is still the company's main foreign consumer. In 2010, Rusneft exported nearly 10 million tons of oil there. In the sea terminals, Rosneft is expanding sales of bunker fuel. In 2010, the company organized special areas for river bunkering in the ports of Moscow and St. Petersburg and also worked out a system of fuel delivery to the port of Yaroslavl in winter. Rosneft is planning to enter the Asia-Pacific market by establishing the Rosneft Marine Singapore Limited Company for refueling ships in the largest center of bunkering in Singapore. Fueling large tankers of LR2 type is comparable with the fueling of an Airbus A320 in its scale. On fueling aircraft, more than 20 Russian airlines were fueled with nearly 80,000 tons of kerosene in 2010. Rosneft Sheremetyevo International Airport plane refueling services exemplify the most modern engineering achievements. Also, there are similar services in other major airports of the country. To add to that, a new fueling station in Vladivostok Airport Konevichi is under construction to be finished for the APEC summit in 2012. Young, fast-growing, ambitious and transparent, that's how the Rosneft company can be characterized. Last year it opened a new stage in its development as it became a global energy leader. Its updated strategy has generated new challenges and long-term goals to ensure sustainable growth and profits for its shareholders. Impressive achievements in 2010 ensured a good starting point for implementing the new strategic plans of Rosneft.